Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and thank you so much for being here today. If you are new here, um, welcome. If you are interested in tarot readings, true crime cases, unsolved cases, missing persons cases, please consider subscribing. I do upload every week, although I am late this week, I apologize, but I do upload every week. And though, and for those of you who come back every week, I thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. I do have to apologize because like I said, I am late this week. It's been just a very hectic week. For those of you uh, who watched my video about my uh, three month hiatus and my update on my thyroid, uh, I did have a follow-up this past week and so uh, just to update you on that my numbers are actually coming down into the more normal range my doctor did keep me on the level thyroxine and even upped the dosage so I'm happy about that because that has been a life-saving medication for me I no longer feel like I did three months ago so that's a good thing and then um, just working on the garden. I've never gardened before. I decided to have a garden this year, mainly because prices are absolutely ridiculous. And I just felt this need to, uh, I don't know, I just felt this need to try to grow my own food and, and vegetables and things this year because it's just, it's our the it's just the way everything is and I, I just felt the urge to try gardening try try my hand at gardening I, like I said I've never had a garden before I have grown a couple of things in the past I've grown a tomato plant one year and I think I grew some green peppers one year but I didn't really put any effort into it and so I didn't yield much of a result but this year I've been really like on it uh, I went to YouTube I've been trying to learn on YouTube <laughs> right that's where we go and we want to learn something is YouTube right a lot of good videos that I've been watching so where we live uh, our soil and I, I don't mean the state but this property <laughs> has really really hard soil and it's hard to dig in we've been here for about 15 16 years and I've never even been able to plant so much as a an annual or a perennial because I can't dig down into the ground it's just like rock hard um, so what I wanted to do was do a raised garden bed. So I have two raised garden beds coming. Uh, they are going to be eight feet by three feet. So eight feet long by three feet wide. I've got two of those coming. And then I also have grow bags. So I ordered these grow bags on Amazon. I have seven gallon grow bags and I have 10 gallon grow bags. It just looks like this. Uh, and so I've got a bunch of those, but I was really underestimating uh, how, f well, okay, let me just, okay, I'll have to put a timestamp in here for the people that don't want to listen to me babble for 10 minutes about my gardening debacle. But anyway, uh, I ordered a, like a variety pack seed, uh, seed box from Amazon. I think it had like 20 bags of seeds in there. I went through it and I picked what I wanted and I think it was like 10 bags. So there, I still have like 10 bags of things that I'm not going to plant, right? Um, but because I do live in Indiana and our weather is a bit cooler here, I decided to go ahead and get these seeds germinated in the house. So I had the 10 bags that I, I picked from this variety pack of seeds that I ordered online and then I went to Lowe's and I purchased about six more of the specific things that I wanted, okay, that did not come in this variety pack. So I had no idea how many plants <laughs> that that was actually going to uh, create. I did not know. I thought that in one pot I could just rip okay the bag of seeds and dump all the seeds in one pot and be good okay I had no idea that you had like when I say I don't know anything about gardening I did not know anything about gardening so as I'm learning I'm discovering that no these seeds are planted like two or three seeds at a time and it, you know it just yeah so I ended up having a ton of plants but what I did was I went to Lowe's and I found these jiffy trays that come with peat pellets and a peat pellet is just like a little pellet of soil and there's 72 of these little pellets in this tray and then what you do is you add a whole bunch of water on top of it it absorbs into these peat pellets and then they expand they 
they quadruple in size and it's just soil right so then you can poke a little hole in there and you can drop your one or two seeds in there and top it off and uh, put your your comes with a little plastic dome lid put your lid on there to keep the humidity humidity in there and then just put it up on your windowsill and you're good to go so I read on the package that it can take about four to six weeks to go ahead and get these uh, seeds to the point to where they need to be transferred outside. So I started planting about a week and a half ago, about a week and a half ago. And I got these, you know, this one tray and it didn't even, I don't think I could even get two bags in one tray. So through many, many trips to uh, Lowe's and Walmart this week, I've been going back and forth, getting another tray here, another tray there. By the end, I have five trays of these peat pellets okay uh all over the house i only had a room i only had enough room on the windowsill in the front living room uh for about f i think four of them fit up there so i have like three or four more back here behind me by the sliding glass door so that they can get some sun but what i didn't expect was for the seeds to germinate as quickly as they did and sprout up so like i said i planted all of these about a week and a half ago and I wasn't planning on going outside until probably, I don't know, another couple weeks. I was going to wait till about mid-May um, because it's still a little bit chilly here. Uh, but some of them, like the zucchini and some of those bigger, taller type plants, the green beans, for example, they sprouted up. They're like 12 inches tall already, and it's only been like a week and a half. So what I've been doing all week is... I went and I purchased more of the bigger uh, seed starting three inch pots and I was literally taking these peat pellets and putting them in this pot and adding more soil and giving it some more space because these peat pellets are so tiny and I think that they're convenient if you have small things but for things like zucchini or the cantaloupe or the green beans it's just not it's not big enough and so that's where all my time has been is going back and repotting these I don't want to say repotting but putting them into bigger pots and adding more soil uh, and it's still to the point to where I really do feel like this weekend I'm going to have to I am gonna to have to go outside I'm gonna to have to put them outside just to give you an example let me just show you really quick So this is one of the peat pellet trays and these I think these are yeah these are peas okay so this is what it looks like it's really tiny so to me with the roots coming out I don't know if anybody's a gardener you can kind of tell me what this looks like if this is I, I feel like this is ready to go outside I, I don't know um, these ones here are carrots I have some broccoli over here here's a lettuce so all the empty spaces are the bigger ones that I've had to transport or, or move into. I just stuck this inside of a bigger pot, added more soil, watered it, and it seems to be doing okay. But this is an example of the green beans. So as you can see, I don't want to bend it, but it's super tall and this is just like a week and a half okay so I literally just put that peat pellet in here added more soil and it's literally uh, it to me it's too big for this pot I don't I don't know if what you guys think but I feel like it's time to go outside so that's pretty much what I've been doing for the entire week um, and I don't have anything outside ready yet I don't even have all the soil that I need the beds haven't arrived um, they should be here Friday so I'm hoping to take um, all day Friday and the entire weekend to prep the beds and get everything ready and I also want to kind of sit down and organize about what I want to plant where I want to plant it um, I did learn, I guess, on YouTube that you 
start with the tallest plants in the back and kind of work your way forward. So maybe the tomatoes and the green beans can be in the back. I don't know. So if you guys are interested, I don't mind taking you on this little gardening journey with me. Uh, I can take some videos and show you how it looks and how it turns out, I guess. I'm hoping for the best. Uh, I, like I said, I've never grown anything, but I'm going to try. I'm going to give it my best. So, and then also I started a compost bin, so no one's allowed to throw anything away anymore. Um, it's just been something. I, I, I don't... Anyway, that's what I've been doing all week. So, I apologize for being late. Uh, I feel like I rambled on. Yes, I did ramble on for 10 minutes. Um, what else was I going to say? Did I talk about the private tarot readings? I don't know. Let me just say it again. Even if I did already, I apologize. You can fast forward if you are interested in a private tarot reading. All you have to do is email me. Uh, my email will be in the description box. Uh, I usually try to respond as soon as I see it. I try to check my emails every day. Uh, I've been kind of slacking these past couple of days, though, but I'm going to be on track here pretty soon. So I typically will try to get the reading done within two days. It's usually same day or next day, depending on what's going on, but I, I try to do it fairly quickly. Um, they are about an hour in length. They're pretty in depth. It's an in-depth reading. I use several decks. I have a bunch of other decks that I only use for private readings and not for true crime, but I do use some of these as well. Um, what it is, is it's set up just like I do a regular video. Uh, I record it. You see me shuffle. You see me pull the cards. I go over the overall message and the meaning of each card uh, and what it means for you and your situation. And then I will upload it to YouTube, but I upload it as an unlisted or a private video. I then will email you the direct link to that video and you can watch it at your convenience as many times as you want for as long as you want. So you have that video. Um, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and email me and we can get something set up. I also have a, let me open up this story here that I'm getting ready to go into. I also have a new deck that I wanted to show you guys. So I got the Book of Shadows Tarot, Volume 2. So uh, this is a series, I think. Uh, it's the As Above, So Below. This is the So Below. And I chose that one based on the pictures. Uh, to me, the images and the colors and uh, everything on the cards are important to me. So I, I really do take my time when I do purchase a deck and I look at the cards. I go online, I research them, I read the reviews, I do all sorts of things. This is the one that I chose. I like this one better. It's a little bit m more modern than your typical deck and it is based on Rider Waite. So we're going to be using this one today. I have looked at each and every card but I have not used it in a reading yet. So that, that'll be interesting. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right, now that I've rambled forever and a day, I apologize. All right, so today's reading is a requested reading and it is the story, or not the story, but the case of Cheryl Ann Hansen. This is a cold case, all right? It happened in uh, 1974. So Cheryl Ann Hansen was seven years old. Okay, she went missing on May 31st, 1974. So she has been missing for about five decades, which is crazy. Um, I, I, we don't really have a whole lot of information. I can kind of give you a summary. There's, there's just not a lot of anything and there's not a lot of information out there to find on it. Um, there is an interview of her mom and her dad and I did listen to that. It's a really sad situation. Her mom explains that they lived, um, they were actually, and I just want to make that clear, they were living in Aurora, Ontario, Canada. Okay, so Aurora, Ontario. All right, so where they lived, and I believe it was Cheryl, her mom and her dad, and Cheryl had a couple of siblings, two siblings, I think, but I don't know the ages. I don't know if they were older or younger or what they were, but they lived very close to relatives. Okay, so about a 10-minute walk. And Cheryl, who was seven, would often walk to her cousin's house to play with them. 
This was only a 10 minute walk. It was a safe, fairly safe neighborhood. She had never had any problems before. Um, so this day was no different when Cheryl asked her mom if she could in fact go to her cousin's house to play. And originally her mom states that she told her no. She said she had a bad feeling that day. She just didn't know what it was. She didn't feel comfortable with her leaving. She said no, but she said that Cheryl continued to ask and she finally caved and she told her she could. And she explains how she watched Cheryl get her shoes on and her jacket and getting ready and she walks out the door and she never seen her again. Uh, she did wait that 10 minutes though uh, for Cheryl to give her enough time to get to her cousin's house. The mom called the cousin's house and asked if Cheryl had arrived. They said she did not. And immediately she knew something bad had happened. And unfortunately, that's a, that's a horrible situation when you had a feeling. Uh, and, and I don't mean to say, you know, it's like you had this feeling and you went against that feeling and the worst possible outcome was the outcome. It's just a, a horrible situation. Uh, but anyway, they knew immediately that something was wrong. They called the police. And I do want to read about the search because the search was pretty unprecedented for the time. It said thousands of volunteers, including police, CB radio operators, aircraft, and Queens York militia units, scoured the region for weeks in an unprecedented search of the York region. Cheryl Ann was never found. And that's it. That's all we know. She just walked to her cousin's house and no one has seen her since. Now we do have a suspect, or at least he was a possible suspect. So convicted murderer Donald Everingham confessed to several murders, including that of Cheryl Hansen. He described Cheryl's clothes and drew a crude map of where he'd thrown her body. But the newspapers... Oh, wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. He, Sorry, I lost my space. He drew a crude map of where he'd thrown her body. But the newspapers had been full of Cheryl's description and extensive police searches in the area. He indicated never uncovered the body. Donald Everingham's confession was eventually refuted. Okay, so he would say that he put her somewhere and then they'd go search and she wasn't there. So I don't know if this guy is just one of those criminals that likes to confess to everything under the sun, but I am going to be drawing a couple of cards on him to see. And I think that the, uh, you know, the questions I think are mainly you know what what happened when she was this an abduction i'm assuming this is an abduction right if they looked everywhere in that area it wouldn't have been she got lost so this had to have been an abduction so can we get information about this person uh, or people that were involved in abducting her were they locals did they know her was this planned uh, was she just in the wrong place at the wrong time type of situation. So that's kind of what we're going to be looking into today. And then also I'm going to draw cards on, what's his name? I have it written down, Donald Harry Everingham. Okay. So uh, I will kind of see, curious to see what comes up for, for him. All right. So I do have my old faithful, my heaven and earth, and I have the after tarot, the new deck, and I also have my new era elements and i'm going to actually start out with the new era elements and just kind of get a feel for what comes out i do want to go back to that day may 31st 1974 and just open up with what cheryl wants to tell us and then we'll get into the specific question so tell us what happened that day tell us what happened that day Tell us the story. What happened when you went for your walk? All right, tell us what happened when you went for your walk. You went for your walk, you went to your cousin's house, you were headed to your cousin's house. What happened on the way? Tell us what happened on the way. All right, so she was in a good mood. She was happy. She was headed to her cousin's house, so all was well. 
this is also the six of cups so this is to me she's to me this it this gives me an idea of what her childhood had been up until that point. The, these here are her memories, okay? Memories of her mom, her siblings, having fun, playing, but it's also her demeanor that day as she was headed to her cousin's house. And then we have the Son of Fire, okay? So to me, that is our person. So we've got the, the Son of Fire is going to be the um, uh, Page of Wands, all right, so when wands come out, especially in true crime, a lot of cards will show fire. They have fire in the images. And it's not coming out reversed, but this is definitely a sign of this person has, to me, some anger, okay? Now, being it's a, a, a knight, okay, since it's a knight, or I mean, um, sorry, sun. Well, actually, I think this is... I think this is the page. So being that it's a page, um, it, it kind of makes me feel like either this person was on the younger side or he wasn't uh, a seasoned criminal, if that makes sense. This wouldn't have been something that he had done many times. This could have been the first time that he did something like this and or his age could be on the younger side. And just the way I'm just looking at his face, the way he's staring off to me makes me feel like he's literally watching her. All right. So this is her and this is the person who did this to her, whatever he did to her. And he's watching, he's observing, he's looking, he's watching her walk. We have the lovers. So that's interesting. I'm not quite sure if this is mom and dad yet or if this is somebody else that is involved in the situation, but I'm leaning towards mom and dad. I don't know yet. We've got the hanged man. All right, and the hanged man is reversed. So he was watching and waiting. He was literally watching and waiting. I mean, we've got two cards here. If you look at these two cards here representing him, this person, I do believe it's a male. Um, he is literally staring off and... Uh, almost, I don't want to say stalking, but he was waiting. He was like lying in wait and he was watching her. So really kind of creepy vibes, to be honest with you. I'm getting. And his facial expression here is not, not uh, great. And you know, the fact that this hanged man is coming out reversed almost makes me feel like it's either the fact that I get a little bit of it was the wrong time and the wrong place for her, okay? Uh, and it might have even been the wrong time and wrong place for him. Uh, it's almost like the opportunity arose. Maybe he wasn't as planned as he had hoped. It didn't go as well as he had hoped. Maybe he didn't. Uh, obviously, it, I, I don't believe he, you know, no one was ever arrested for, uh, you know, being connected to Cheryl Ann. But uh, I don't know if he necessarily, I, I'll be curious to see if he has ever done anything else that maybe he's in jail for something else unrelated. But obviously no one has had any consequences for Cheryl Ann. So in a way, I feel like he kind of, you know, he pretty much got away with it, right? Um, but I feel like there was some feelings at the time that he wasn't happy with the way he went about doing it. He wasn't happy with something. It's like he was waiting and he had to take the opportunity. It wasn't the right time. He wasn't ready at that moment, but this opportunity came. He seen her walking down the street uh, and he just took it. He just ran with it. Okay, so we have, um, let me push this down a little bit. All right, so this is fire. So the five of wands, five of wands is conflict, right? It says right there, conflict. So this actually makes me feel like it, I feel, honestly feel like even though she was only seven she knew she was in danger she did not it, there was no um 
no question about it. She knew she was in danger when this person approached her. Okay. Uh, and she put up a fight. She, she did not just go willing, willingly with this individual. Uh, she did not want to get into the car. That plane to me, that transportation, that means of transportation is the vehicle. All right. So I do believe that she was put in a car and she, she was fighting it. She didn't want to get into the car. But being seven, uh, you know, as far as physical wise, I, I don't think that there was any way to, you know, get out of the situation, sadly. I, I honestly don't like reading on a whole, I don't, I'm not fond of reading on children. It's a hard thing for me to read on. But forgive me if it, yeah, okay, so chariot. We've got this plane and we literally have the chariot. So she was definitely put into a car. She was put into a car um, and, a, you know, I'm just looking at all that black smoke. It just, it, it just indicates the whole, it just, it literally gives you the feel, the vibe of this whole situation. And it was just a horrible situation. All right, what else do we have? Okay, so I kind of want to... Let me just pull a couple more here. Snake. Hmm. Despair. What is that? That is water. So we have the Eight of Cups. Wow. Interesting. Oh, sorry. No. Uh, I seen that and I immediately thought it was a snake, but it's actually a turtle caught up in some vines or, or something. But immediately when I seen the head, I thought it was a snake. This person is uh, dangerous. This person was dangerous, okay? Because I don't care if that's a turtle or not. My eye seen a snake and that to me indicates somebody that can literally... You know, I'm literally looking at these cards and the way they're set up. And it's almost like she walked into his territory. It's like going past a snake and, and getting too close. And the snake, uh, you know, lashing out and, and you know, biting you. Okay. Uh, it's almost like that. So I feel like this was a situation where she happened to be crossing his path and got too close to him and that is exactly what he did he reached out and he he grabbed her and it, there was no way for her to to escape that situation being seven and and a small uh what 40 pound probably 40 pounds uh soaking wet so there was just no way uh the fact that there's a bunch of vines here and it looks like this turtle is actually caught up it looks like um maybe even uh like fencing or something like that but he is caught up in it and so that also kind of makes me feel like uh she was restrained somehow as well okay so but a car was definitely used and i think that even inside the car she was restrained and possibly put in i mean this turtle to me looks very uh you know, like scrunched in a place that he doesn't want to be in. It looks dark to me. I would not be surprised if, uh, unfortunately, a trunk was used. Um, but there's definitely a, a feeling to me that's coming out that she was restrained in, in some way. And then we have the universe. So definitely that is like her world. Her, her that, you know, that was the end of her, that was the end of her world as she knew it. At that point in time that was the end of the world as her family knew it at that point in time it literally uh, it changed everyone's lives that knew Cheryl at that time including hers so this one here the universe the world reversed uh, I do I do feel like Cheryl Ann is no longer here. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I don't feel like she's still, I don't, I don't feel like she's here on earth. Um, and this also just goes with the fact that her parents, parents were absolutely devastated with it. So let me go ahead and pull one more with this deck. Adjustment. So yeah, adjustment. Um, that, to me is 
now we're kind of getting into the family, which does actually make me feel like this lover's card, the husband and wife, uh, that is mom and dad, okay? Uh, their, their world ended, right, that day. And I really do feel like this is mom and dad for another reason as well. Her parents are actually quite older now. So in the interview, if you do watch the interview, I have to remember to try to put it in the description. But in the interview, mom and dad are significantly older, right? This happened in 1974. So she's been missing for almost 50 years but they've also aged 50 years and so they do look older and it reminds me of this couple so I just wanted to wait a little bit longer before I called it for mom and dad but I do believe it is mom and dad and they have had to adjust they've literally had to adjust their lives uh, you know so that they could continue on and provide some sort of life for the other two children that they they still had to raise um, and so that was kind of a, a balancing act for them to to maintain some normalcy for them, but still grieving the loss of Cheryl Ann. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and start seeing if we can get some information on, let me use this deck a little bit more. If we can get any information on this person who's responsible. I'm curious to know if this person was from that area. Was he from that town? Aurora or anywhere near that area? Was this a local? I would say that he, with an ace coming out, okay, the ace of uh, air. So what's that? That's the sword. So ace of swords. I feel like he could potentially be from that area. Uh, literally from right in the middle of that area. I mean, we've got the eye of a storm right there. So literally, uh, I do feel like he's from at least that town. Uh, definitely, I feel like he's in the area, but I do feel like he's local to that town as well. All right. Okay, what else? Is he still there? I want to know if he's still there. Oh, the Emperor. That's interesting. Huh. That would actually... Interesting. Interesting. The Emperor. When the Emperor comes out to me, that's someone who is in an influential position, right? He's the boss. Uh, this is somebody who is a supervisor or not always. It can be a husband. I've had readings where the husband comes out as the emperor and the wife comes out as the empress. Uh, but it usually is that it, you do get that uh, mm, kind of, it, it's a controlling person. It can be a controlling person. And it can also be a person in uh, pretty high on the uh, hierarchy. Okay, so... Uh, this person to me either is someone of influence to me that's what I'm I'm leaning towards okay I'm looking at all of the backdrop here with the eagle and uh, you know these signs of justice this to me makes me feel like because this this question is specifically about the person responsible I'm not asking about law enforcement or anything like that I'm asking about him so for him to come out as the emperor and with the backdrop that we have here makes me feel like he is a person of influence himself what is his position in this town because I feel like he is that there's something uh, there's something about the eye of that storm and his position that is uh, really piquing my interest so what is this was he uh, was he a police officer success all right so that is the um, six of Pentacles Okay, the Six of Pentacles reversed. So I usually don't look at the Six of Pentacles as success, especially if it's, I mean, I guess it can be considered success coming uh, upright, but this is not coming upright. So this to me tells me that whatever he did, he didn't do it very well. 
Um, he, he obviously was not successful. He didn't, he wasn't part of the team. This was a person who was not easy to work with. All right. So if you look at this card here, we've got all these people working together. It looks like they're on a string. They're on a rope. Okay. For safety. They're all helping one another. They're all contributing. Uh, they're making headway. So the fact that it's coming out reversed and it's coming out next to him, okay, so whatever position, whatever ranking position he had in this town, he was not uh, he was not a team player. He didn't like to work with people. He wasn't helpful. Uh, this is more of a, a stern, bossy type of person that probably not a lot of people cared for. He just had the personality that people just didn't didn't care for him. All right, so what was this role? What was this role? What was he doing? And we have the Daughter of Fire. So the Page of Wands. Page of Wands. Interesting. Page of Wands. Now, when pages come up, they don't always have to mean a young person. They can be a young person. They can be a young event. They can be starting out, the beginnings of something, right? They are young, but it can be almost referring to anything. So a page might come out in reference to starting a new job. You could be 70 years old, but still starting a new job, and a page could come out representing that. So it doesn't always necessarily mean age. This makes me feel like um, it, you know, it's almost like he, I don't feel like whatever position he was in, he had been in it for very long. Okay. This wasn't, uh, new to him, but he wasn't doing it very well and he wasn't liked very well. So I don't know if there were any local politicians in the area. I don't know anything about, you know, their politicians in Canada and how they, if they have mayors or I, I don't know anything about it. I feel ridiculous saying that, but I don't. Um, but I'm curious to know if there were any local politicians in that area that were somewhat on the young age. Okay. I would say probably thirties, no older than 30. Um, if this person was up and coming in the politics or was he a police officer, a firefighter, whatever, someone that people knew, but couldn't stand to be around really thought he knew everything, thought he knew everything, but he didn't, he really, he really didn't know everything, but he had that impression of himself. And then we have the, um, nine of swords so cruelty and it's reversed right so he was actually quite mean uh i i really do look at this as his personality that's that uh 3 a.m card that's usually the picture of the woman in the bed or the man in the bed and they've got the swords on the wall and they can't sleep and their mind is you know going a million a minute and they're thinking about all their their problems and and whatnot so but this one here is different and it's cruelty and I don't want to be graphic. I don't want to be disrespectful to Cheryl Ann or any family, uh, in, uh, you know, that may view this, although probably not, but I'm just saying I, I don't like really talking like this, but I also feel like this is an indication, unfortunately, of, uh, what he is capable of doing. I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Uh, he was a mean guy. He, he was not a friendly guy at all. He was not a nice guy. Um, yeah. Didn't get along with people. Wheel of Fortune. It was almost like, I don't actually believe that this was premeditated. I really don't. I don't think that, I, I, I mean, I really think that this was a crime of opportunity that he happened to be in that area and she happened to be the one walking in his territory like that snake that I explained. And it was just his luck. Like he literally just, it was, it was really the wrong time, wrong place for Cheryl Ann. Right time, right place for him. Um, he, he took his opportunity and he has managed to, to get away with it. Now it was a gamble, right? Because I'm looking at all these gambling symbols. So it was a gamble. He was taking a risk. He was taking a risk, but he decided to take that risk regardless. He, he wasn't worried about, I don't think he was worried about the consequences because I think that he has uh, a whole boatload of arrogance. Like this is somebody who thinks that they are everything, uh, and they are above everyone and that everyone is below him and he just has that air of, of arrogance 
and there is a position of something to kind of give him that you know work him up like that I don't necessarily think he was at the top top position of whatever he was doing but he did have something he did have some position that made him feel this way but he took it to the extreme so it's like being uh, you know a, a police officer but acting like you're uh, you know judge jury and execution are all in one and and you know and private investigator and just taking it to the extreme that's what I'm picking up from him okay so yes he could have very well have been a police officer or a fire fighter or something like that but he took it as he was way more than that all right um, and this was a gamble for him but he was willing to take it and he got away with it he literally got away with it uh, but I do have to think um, I really do I do believe that there uh, there is DNA that would connect him to this crime. Okay, so I don't necessarily know yet if he is still alive, and I'm going to ask some questions about that. And I'm also going to ask about this. Uh, what was his name? This Donald guy. Um, I don't. I don't really feel like it's Donald. Okay, I don't think that Donald's responsible. But I'm looking at this gambling card, and I, I'm looking at that little thing here. And the first word that comes to my mind is DNA. Even though this is nothing to do with DNA in this particular card, that is what came to my mind. So this tells me that there is some form of DNA or there's some form of evidence that would connect him, okay, to Cheryl Ann if he were to get caught. So this person has something. He has something, whether it's clothing um, or, or some. there is some tangible evidence that would connect him to Cheryl Ann. And, you know, it, it might not be found, and it's kind of why I'm leaning towards him being alive. It wouldn't be found until he passes away. So if he passes away and then somebody goes in, and, and that's if it's found by somebody who would even think to report it because it's been, what, 50 years? So uh, if he had clothing items, let's say, uh, you know, there's something that he has in his in his possession that would absolutely connect him to Cheryl Ann. Uh, but nobody has seen it yet. Um, let me see. Is he still in that area? Is he still in that area? Yeah. And I, well, I've got, that's interesting. Interesting here. I've got the four of pentacles. Um, and I like this particular image of it because we look at all those roots. He has roots in that area. He has ties to that area. He is still connected to that area. I don't necessarily know if he lives there per se because it came out reversed, but that is his home. That's where he's from. So he is absolutely still connected to that area. And there are people that know him that are still living in that area. Um, and, and, you know that's just the way it is but with it coming out reversed he may have moved away he may not be in the same house that he was in at that time or the same home that he was in at that time but he is I think in the vicinity so he may not be in that exact eye of the storm maybe he has moved out a little bit but he's still in that area all right um, has he told anyone has he has he told anyone what he what he's done. Um, huh. We've got the uh, Five of Swords. Hmm. Interesting card. So Five of Swords and it's a uh, spider here, right? So it's a spider. Um, I don't think he's, I, I think that that's, I think that that's actually partly as to, that that's, the fact that he has not said a word to anybody is why he's been able to get away with it for so long. This is defeat. He has not been defeated. He, he I believe that he has been able to get away with this and he literally covered his tracks very well, um, but he has not said a word to anyone. He, he 
you know, he's very quick. I mean, our spiders are quick, right? He's very quick. Uh, he knows what he's doing. I mean, he's not as, uh, he's not as intelligent as he thinks he is, but he, he has been able to get away with this. And I think that the main reason is because there's been no talking, no talking to anyone. He has not shared anyone, any kind of information. Um, and he has hidden away anything. I think that there, that evidence or, or DNA or whatever it is, possessions that he has that I feel like he, he, he has, um, those things are put away. Okay. So that might be something that could come out later on. Like I said, if he were to pass away and, you know, his home needs to be taken care of or cleaned or, or whatever the case may be, they might come across it at that time. But this is something that he, uh, he, he stored away and he's very very quiet he's very meticulous about it he's very quiet he doesn't talk to anybody um is he married let me see okay so father of earth so the father is the king so he is older now right so he's obviously aged of course we know that we don't need tarot cards to tell us he's older um but he's still alive that's the important thing i believe that he is absolutely still alive He's elderly, but he's still alive. And then we have, um, what is this one here? Seven of Wands. So Seven of Wands, bravery. Hmm, interesting. So we have, what's coming out for me in this card is the uniforms that they're wearing. We literally have firefighters here. Uh, so I do think that his field is in that area. There's something about a uh, police firefighter, something in the local area. I know I mentioned politics, but I'm not really getting the politics vibe. Uh, I, I think I said politics because we've got Abraham Lincoln over here. But um, there, there's something he, he's connected to that kind of stuff himself. I want to ask if he was, and some of these questions are what the person who requested this video were the questions that they had too. And one of the other questions was, uh, were they part of the search? Were they part of that huge group of people that came out and, and helped search for uh, little Cheryl Ann? And so for the card for that one, we have the magician. Uh, interesting that we have all the we have CNN on here Fox News social media a for sale sign um, we have the uh, stock market numbers behind him right to me this means that he was eating it up he was watching everything and he could very well have been a part of it all uh, I do think that it's a possibility that he was around the area and he was part of it. He was literally part of it. This magician here is standing amongst all of these things. So he was like right in the mix of it, which does go with the idea of him potentially having a job that would put him there. Um, I would not be surprised if he was searching and helping to find Cheryl Ann when he was the one. Isn't that what the magician does? It's trickery. It's not always. I don't like to look at the magician that way. Uh, and he didn't come out reversed. But in this particular situation, uh, I'm going with my gut feeling that this was a very tricky person. This was a liar. He was a manipulator. He is a liar and is a manipulator. And he was very well about, he was very well aware of what was going on in this case and in the media. Okay, so media 1974 was probably the evening news and the newspaper. He was definitely following that. And then, of course, word of mouth in the town. He was on it all. He, he was aware of all of it. All right. Let me see. Was he ever a suspect? Whoops. Okay, so we have um, the three of pentacles. We got worker bees. No, he was actually one working on the case. I, I believe that it was the opposite. It was quite the opposite. He was never a suspect. I do not believe that he was ever a suspect. Now, normally, I would say that this is three people possibly working together, but not in this situation. Okay, not in this situation. I do believe that he was working alone, but 
you know, he could have been searching with two other people. He could have been, on, you know, he could have been working on this case or there, you know, there might have been two people closely uh, associated with him. Wow. I mean, I keep saying working on this case like like a police officer. OK. And that's kind of what I'm I'm leaning to. It was like he was almost uh, assigned to the case, like he was actually working the case. Um, let me switch decks. I've been using this one for a hot minute now, almost the whole time. I usually don't re use this one that, that long. Um, let's go ahead and just go into this new one and see how it works here. All right. Okay, so I want to ask if we can get an idea of where Cheryl Ann is. So, location of Cheryl Ann. All right, Cheryl, where are you? Tell us where you're at. Cheryl, tell us where you're at. Tell us where you're at. Where you? Hmm, page of Wands. Okay. Two of Swords reversed. Hmm. Not good. Okay. The lovers again. The Knight of Swords reversed. The Nine of Cups. All right. So, uh, in my honest opinion, I don't feel like she's very far from her home. I really don't. I don't know anything about Aurora or how big it is or anything. If it's a small town, medium town, large city, no clue. But I feel like uh, this person is, I do feel like she is in a home. Okay. I, I feel like she could be potentially in a home or she's very close to her home. Okay. Uh, and it's interesting that we have this couple and they're buying a house right they're buying a house but there's a for sale sign there and her parents it just immediately when i seen this it made me think of how her parents moved to nova scotia they left okay and so that kind of made me feel like this was them this is their home and it makes me think that she could potentially still be in that area uh this man I believe lived very close to the family, okay? Uh, possibly the same neighborhood. And so, yes, a car would have been used, right? He could have used a car to get a block away, but I don't think that he had to go very far. He didn't have to go very far. Uh, so they were looking in that area, but I believe that since he had her in a home, in his home, that's why they couldn't find her. She was actually taken into a home. Um, and it was done quickly. We we have... Uh, where did I see the uh, swords? We have the Knight of Swords. So... <sighs> looks like she's busy working, writing. I actually, when I look at, like I said, I've looked at all of these cards, but I haven't really used them in a reading. And so I, I, it's like seeing them for the first time, to be honest with you. Um, I'm looking at this Knight of Swords and it's completely different. It's a different vibe from any Knight of Swords that I've ever had. Uh, but interesting that we have a chalice. We do have a cup here. And it looks like she's working. You know, she's just working really, really hard. She's getting her job done, right? That's what the Knight of Swords does. He gets his job done. Um, but she's planning. It looks like she could be planning something. It, again, makes me feel like this was something that was impromptu. 
it's like he's seen this it this to me again with it coming out reversed makes me feel like this was not planned it wasn't thought out it wasn't planned it was like literally that that wheel of fortune that lucky card really really is accurate in this particular story because this man uh, took this opportunity to do something that he wanted to do right he's a cruel individual um, and he got away with it and it just so happened to be just a, a lucky for him okay unlucky for many other people but lucky for him this opportunity just literally appeared in front of him I don't think that he ever thought about doing this before so I think that that absolutely out uh, rules out the um, uh, I keep forgetting his name, the Donald guy. I don't think that this is a person who had a history of doing this or a pattern of behavior. It was literally, uh, he seen her, he looked at her, he watched her, and he did it. He acted. He acted. It was not planned. Um, we have enough pages, too, as well coming out and some aces to also indicate to me that this was not something that he had ever done before. And then we have um, uh, the uh, Page of Wands. So again, something young. Uh, we have... Hmm. She's got red hair. Red hair and we've got lizards all over the place. To me, this is another sign that he he didn't quite know what he was getting himself into. He was kind of, uh, I, I'm looking at her and it's like she doesn't have quite, she doesn't quite have the control over her situation as she will eventually with more experience, okay? So this is a person that is, um, you know, they're learning, okay, so to speak, but they're not mastered yet. And so I feel like this is something that he could have continued to do after the fact. Uh, he very well could have continued to, he, he could have committed crimes after, but definitely I feel like this was the first one. Uh, but that gives me almost a feeling that this is something that he did and he loved it. He had, he enjoyed the thrill uh, and he continued to do it. And the arrogance continued to grow and grow and grow because I don't believe that this person has ever been found out. Okay. Uh, I don't think that he's even registered on anyone's radar for being a suspect of anything. Uh, the two of swords, two of swords reversed. Yeah. So again, that just, uh, it, that's just another card to me that was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it and see see what it is. Uh, and try it. And he did it and he got away with it. Which would explain the Nine of Cups. You know, he was content. He was happy. Like, oh my God, I did this and I actually got away with it. And now we're getting higher in numbers. We're getting to the Nine. Uh, which to me represents um, a repetition. It can also represent the... Uh, kind of coming to the end of a, an era or a cycle and so this to me does kind of make me feel like he enjoyed it and he was so happy that he got away with it that he has attempted it since he has done it he, he's done he has committed crimes I don't know if it's to this extent but he has committed crimes uh, since doing that to Cheryl and getting away with it but I, I don't think that he is um, as far as where Cheryl is, I think that she is uh, much closer to the home than people realize. She's in that air. I, I believe that she's in that neighborhood. Okay. More information on location. Three of Cups reversed. Four of Pentacles. So, all right. And then we have the death. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I, I do feel like there's a house involved. We have another four here. We have the Four of Pentacles. So, four to me is foundation. It's stability. It's home. Um, regardless of what 
uh, element it is. It, it, to me, represents home, okay? Uh, and so I do feel like she is in his home, okay? Wherever he is, which I believe is, uh, at least at one time, was in that town. Now, he may have moved, like I said, he may have moved from that area, but I still think that he's in the surrounding area. But I do believe that there's something in the house that he was living in at the time when he took her that would, uh, and I hate to, like I said, I don't feel comfortable saying things like that, but I do think that he has hidden her. He, I keep thinking of that spider wrapping up its uh, dinner, right? In, in his cobweb or whatever it is, or his whatever. Uh, I feel like there's something where he has hidden her, okay? He has hidden her, um, and it's not anything, if somebody were living there, they may not know. Uh, it's literally like one of those movie scenes where, you know, somebody finds somebody in the wall in the basement. That's literally what I'm trying to get to. That's what I feel is the situation here. He has he has literally kept her in that house, in that area. Now, he may no longer be there, but she is still there, okay? So someone else may be living there now, um, but, you know, that that's to me what it is. She he, She's in that area. Um, and then we have... So that's those two cards, you know, the home. And then we have the fact that it is the death card. So it's literal death. Uh, that also, again, makes me feel like, you know, uh, unfortunately she is no longer here. Um, and then we have the three of cups reversed. So that this whole pull right here, when I'm asking more information about where she's at, uh, it's just a... It's just a, it, it's just a really, uh, it's just not a good pull. Uh, we've got the Three of Cups, so we've got Celebration reversed, though, so it's like not a celebration. We have the Four of Pentacles, the Eight of Swords, the Death card. It's just kind of dark and gloomy cards. And it's sad when, when that's the question that we're asking. Um, but I, I do feel like, you know, th there's, I'm looking at this and we're in the kitchen. We're behind, she's got a, a cabinet open. There's a door. Um, you know, I look at all of those things and we've got little elves here moving things around in the cabinet. So it's, it's potentially a place that you would often use. It could be a storage area. It could be a shed or it could be something in a cellar or a basement or something like that. Um, and they have no clue. There, there's nothing there indicating that anything like this is going on um, because she's so well concealed uh, that that is why she has not been found. And then we have the Eight of Swords. So I, I look at this one and this woman here looks like she is... Uh, this makes me think of the New Era Elements Tarot, the Three of Swords. Uh, it's a pretty graphic card where the person is cutting their wrist. And it kind of gives me the Three of Swords vibe. This woman here looks, you know, out of it. It looks like she maybe has been, you know, shooting up some drugs here. And she looks like she's zoned out or knocked out. The place is a mess. Uh you know, just it, it, not a good situation. And so this actually kind of makes me feel like <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised if over the years, I, I do believe that this is obviously if you're willing or capable, not willing, but capable of committing a crime like this, there's something wrong with you. Right. But I, I feel like he has been miserable okay his entire life and i also feel like this is an indication that there could be some drug activity as well so even though his position was something i think somewhat influential maybe not horrendously influential but he had he was in a position to where he had inside information on this case okay he was part of the search i believe he was involved in the community people knew him they didn't like him but they knew him uh, but this is a person who was so miserable and he could have very well been doing drugs at that time as well but definitely afterwards he just wasn't 
uh, he, he, there, there's something off about him. But I, I, I kind of look at this as, you know, the Eight of Swords usually shows the woman being bound, right? She's kind of being held against her will. And I feel like that is definitely his situation. Uh, he, he's kind of bound uh, mentally. He's just stuck in the situation. He, he's just a, a, a really deranged, unhappy, miserable person. And I do believe that he turned to substances to kind of cope and, and numb himself to everything around him, including his own demons. And so uh, that's the way I'm looking at that card. So he could very well eventually have gotten into uh, some drugs. All right. I want to ask if anybody suspected him uh, because I don't think they did. But I am curious. Did anyone suspect him? I don't know if I'm going to draw any cards on the... What's his name again? Donald. I don't know if I'm going to draw any cards on Donald because I, I don't feel like Donald is involved in this. I really don't. Uh, Donald is n not the right person for this one. All right. Yeah. So uh, again, my question was, did anyone suspect him? And I pulled the Ace of Wands reverse. So if it had come up upright, I would have said, yeah, some, somebody, somebody thought he was off or something, something. But it comes out reversed. And so I, I feel like that's, again, that's a no. Um, he, he just wouldn't even register as even a possibility. He... <laughs> He had everyone fooled. He just had everyone fooled. Oh, sorry. I thought this was the Ace of Wands. This is the Two of Wands. Um, but still coming out reverse to me is a, a no. This is not. Um, this is not any anything. No one suspected him at all. Two of Wands. Two of Wands. Hmm. I had a feeling earlier that he did this again after Cheryl. I believe that Cheryl was the first victim, but I do get this feeling that he did it again afterwards, and this, along with that Two of Swords, is making me feel like uh, he could have done it twice. He could have at least done it twice, possibly more, but... Uh, I, I kind of feel like this is something that, he, you know, is making me feel like he could have at least in, done this twice. So I'd be curious to know if there were any other uh, cases of missing children in that area around that time frame. Not even necessarily in that time frame. It could have been 10 years later. It could have been 15, 20 years later. But uh, I'm, I'm curious if anyone has gone missing without a trace like that in that area. Seven of Pentacles. Let me see here. The Fool. Hmm. And the Five of Wands. So I just wanted to draw a couple more cards on him just to see, you know, what his situation was, how he was at that time. Um, again, I, I do feel like, and if anyone suspected, so uh, again, I, I don't feel like he was suspected at that time. Um, it, it just, and, and I don't think that he's ever been suspected. I don't think anybody has, has ever looked at him as a person of interest. Uh, like I said earlier, he's not the type of person that gets along well with people. He doesn't work well with people. He's not liked. He's not a likable person, but he's not seen as somebody that is capable of doing something like this. Okay, so, you know, if again, if anybody is in that area or if you live in that area, uh, this would be somebody that is, uh, quite frankly, an asshole. Like, you don't want to be around him, right? He thinks he knows everything. He thinks he's right all the time. He's very arrogant. Uh, and he, part of that arrogance is because he has managed to get away with this for so long. 
Uh, and I think that that's mainly not because he's so gosh darn intelligent, but he, he has not said a word. He just has not said a word to anyone. So that is part of it. Uh, that's the main reason. And then we have the fool. So again, this makes me feel like this was without it. I can honestly say, okay, I don't want to say without a doubt, but this was not planned. This was not premeditated in any way whatsoever. He was not out scouting, scouting around for uh, a victim. This was something that was reckless. This was done unexpectedly. He did not plan to do this. He was literally, if you look at this card, literally we have a female, okay, a young woman just minding her own business with her jacket and her hat and her, her, her boots and her bag and she's just walking down the street. She's just literally walking down the street and she came in contact with him. She crossed his path. Um, this is just another another reiteration that it was an opportunity for him. It was not planned. He didn't expect to do it. He didn't think about doing it prior. It was just an opportunity that presented itself, unfortunately, for him. And because of the circumstances, no one happened to see it. Uh, and you know, he never talked about it. He never, you know, he never uh, confessed to anyone or um, trusted anyone enough to uh, confide in them. And so he has been able to keep this secret. But in the process of keeping the secret, he has also deteriorated himself um, and not never suspected. But this was a reckless event. This was an unplanned. This was not planned at all. Uh, literally, I feel like it came out of nowhere, just minding his own business, doing his thing. And then this opportunity just comes up and, and he goes with it. All right. So let's go ahead. And what am I at an hour and 11 minutes? So, um, I want to know if we are ever going to get any kind of justice for Cheryl Ann. Uh, you know, are we ever going to get any kind of information as she ever going to be found? Is Cheryl Ann ever going to be found? The Queen of Pentacles, um, reversed. Interesting card. Queen isn't usually with someone else. The Five of Cups. Okay. So, um, in all honesty, at this point in time, I think it would be, uh, if she were found, it would be just a random, oh my God, look at this. What is this type of, you know, uh, situation? I don't think that I'm look. <laughs> interesting enough. We have the queen of pentacles. I like this deck. Typically the queen and sometimes the Kings, they're usually just themselves alone on the card, right? It's just a queen. This one here though, gives me lovers vibes. Okay, this is like a couple, so definitely not your typical queen card, but I like it, and it gives me a different perspective on the queen of pentacles. I actually feel like this is her mom and dad. This is Cheryl Ann's mom and dad. Now, to me, it's coming out reversed. My question was, is are we ever going to have justice for Cheryl Ann? Is Cheryl Ann ever going to have justice? I don't feel like it's going to be while her parents are still here. Unfortunately, uh, I do think that this is mom and dad and I, you know, I, I feel like this is them. Okay. They look like such a, a, this looks like such a wonderful couple, carefree, happy, genuinely happy, right? Just enjoying their day. It's a sunny day. To me, this is telling me that this is them after they have crossed over. Okay. So I don't believe that it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be while they're here on earth. And I'm not even convinced that they would find uh, or that there would be any justice uh, at all, period. We have the Five of Cups. Uh, and I don't, I hate it when, you know, you don't, I mean, you wish you could just draw a justice card or something like that to indicate that there's hope, that there's still hope. But this Five of Cups is, is not a good sign. This is like com complete depression. It comes out reversed as well. So... I, I honestly, like I said, I, I think it would be more or less if somebody just came upon something, 
you know, one day and they happen to solve a 50 or a 60 year old murder case or, or missing persons case. Uh, but I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like they will. Uh, any other, any other messages, any other information that we need to know about Cheryl Ann? Yeah, so we have the Two of Cups reversed. So this is mom and dad. This is this is mom and dad. And it just really, to me, shows the fact that mom and dad came up so much in this reading. They came up, though, as a couple together. They have, they have been able to be there for one another. They have stayed together. Okay, it's been 50 years. I believe that they're still together. At least they did the interview together. Um, but it, they have overcome something that tends to break families and couples apart, right? But they did not allow it to do that. And I don't know what their whole life was like. They may have gotten close to that point, but they have they have managed to stay together and they've supported one another. I imagine they've had to support one another but they were equally devastated, equally devastated. Uh, and they're always coming up together. So that's, imp that's interesting. Uh, so I believe that it's a very strong connection, a very strong marriage. And they pulled themselves together, even though they were suffering on the inside, they pulled themselves together for their other children. Even if they had to move away, they had to move away and kind of restart their life someplace else, but they were able to pull them pull themselves together enough to provide a life for their other children. Um, so that says a lot about them as, uh, you know, parents. And I do want to, I know I said I wasn't going to go ahead and draw any cards on this Donald guy, uh, but I, I do want to just draw a couple cards just um, out of fairness. Let me just draw a couple cards on Donald. I wish I could re see how bad my memory is. All right, I've had to look at his name like 30 times just in this reading. All right, Donald Harry Everingham. Donald Harry Everingham have anything to do with Cheryl Ann's disappearance. Yeah, so we have temperance reversed to me. That is... Yeah, no, I don't think that he had anything. Yeah, he didn't have anything to do with it. I don't, I don't believe he had anything to do with it. This four of cups to me is like an, you know, this is somebody who is, this is a stubborn card for me. This is someone who's being offered something and doesn't want to take it. He's being offered something, but he's pissed off about what he, he, he doesn't want that. He wants what he can't have, right? And he's not willing to budge, even though what's being offered is an opportunity. It almost makes me feel like he did this to, hopefully, because it came out reversed, it makes me feel like he did this to hopefully get something in return that he wanted. And when he didn't get what he wanted, then he recanted, okay? Or he, he you know, yeah. I don't know if he recanted or if they just dismissed what he said. I'm not sure, but that's what I feel happened. Okay. He was hoping to get something in return, uh, and, and, you know, maybe a lighter sentence. I don't know, but there was something in it for him that he was hoping to gain and it didn't work out. And so he just, to me, isn't, isn't the, um, he, he's just not the guy. Uh, it doesn't make sense, uh, with this, with this poll. So I don't think that he has anything to do with it. Uh, he, yeah, that that's that's the way I'm looking at that one. All right, let me pull a couple more cards because this is my favorite deck. So just to finish up the reading, final cards, final few cards, finish up the reading. Um, okay, oops. <sighs> okay, justice. Uh, let me end it on that one. Um, the justice card does make an appearance tonight. Uh, but it comes out in reverse. And so I, I really, I feel like the odds with this case being as old as old as it is, already being close to 50 years or 50 years, 
Um, it just doesn't seem likely that it's going to happen. And the cards are indicating that it probably isn't. There's probably, uh, you know, I think mom and dad are going to get closure on this, sad to say, when when they they cross over and they're they're able to reunite again with Cheryl uh that is when that is when everything will be kind of you know that is just going to be the closure that they get I don't believe it's going to be a, a closure here on this side and I, I I you know I don't like saying that um you know because you do hear of these cases where They've been a cold case or unsolved for, uh, you know, 30, 40 years. And, you know, something comes up and they, they figure out who a Jane Doe is or a John Doe or they discover something. And so there there's hope that these cases can be solved. But in this one, with the cards that are coming out, I just feel like it, it's leaning towards the opposite. So I hate to end readings on a sour note like that. I mean, this was a rough reading. I'll be honest with you. This is a rough reading for me. Um, just, I don't know. It's so sad. It's just such a sad case. Uh, and I, I had a really hard time doing this reading. And I know I've told you guys before that I don't really like to read on children, which is why you don't see a whole lot of children readings on my channel. Um, I, I, there's just something about reading on kids that I, I just don't feel comfortable doing. Um, but I have done it. I've done it a couple of times. Just it's not a lot. I don't like to do it a lot. Um, and this one was a challenging one for me. But anyway, I've talked enough. We're at an hour and 21 minutes. So I am definitely going to, when I upload this, make sure I put the timestamp in. So if any of you do not want to watch everything that I talked about in the beginning, you can just go straight to the reading. Uh, I hope that you found this uh, interesting at least, and maybe you can look into the case. And uh, I will definitely put the link to the uh, interview with mom and dad. Uh, now that I've done the reading, I want to go back and watch the interview again and just see what different feelings that I get coming from from both of them. But guys, until next week, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you soon. Bye.